Garage Moko channel. This is Adam with ND72. So today we're in the garage again with my SLK 320 Supercharge Death Cart. So if you guys are not familiar with this build, I'm going to go through really quick with it. This is my Death Cart that was built out of an SLK 320. We then, with the 10 to 1, or it's like a 10 to 1 compression block, we threw it. M11 2K Supercharger right on there with the ECU and a couple other supporting stuff. We got rear mounted heat exchanger and cooling and all that stuff. And this little girl's quite a beast. It should weigh roughly, I think it's like 2,200 pounds and have, this is basically factory boost, factory everything. The only mods are intake exhaust. This should have roughly, I would say maybe 320, maybe 300 horsepower to the wheel. And it weighs 2,200 pounds. So what we're gonna be doing today is kind of a safety object and just something that I think is going to make it look cooler. So as you guys know, I have my old, very old Sparco rims on these. These are 5 by 114 I'll just drop that. In the rear, they're 16 by 8 In the front, they're 17 by 7 Now, most of you know, I've been running with just three lugs, three lug nuts, or three lug bolts, because I just didn't have the right ones at the time. They're on other cars. So what we're going to be doing today is making the car a lot safer and test some stuff out. You might be wondering, how, how are you going to make the car a lot safer there, Adam? I'm going to show you right here with studs. And no, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about some wheel studs. So I have wheel studs on almost all my cars I convert over just because it's so much easier to hang a car. And if you're ever going to change a rim setup, you don't have to go look for another bolt. Look for a little bit longer shank. Because that's the issue with this car right now. I just couldn't find enough of them, and I didn't want to spend the money. So right here is a wheel stud. This one I just got from Amazon. You can get them pretty cheaply. I usually go with the FCP Euro ones, but the prices, holy crap, they jacked them up astro -economical. These are cheap, and I could get them that day, like ready available. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a heads up of a couple things about studs. Now, if you're doing any stud conversion, make sure you get the right size. So for an R170 chassis, it's gonna be an M12 by 1.5. First of all, now when you go to like an SL class or the E55 or anything like that, they're an M14. So just make sure you buy the right ones. And there are also ones where you go from M14 to M12. So just get what you want. Also, this one big thing that you cannot, that I bought before and I messed up. So look right here. Do you see right here? Some of them that you buy have like, it's a bubble or a wedge, okay? You don't want that. You want it to be a smooth, non-threaded area. The reason behind that is when you're putting into the rotors, the other ones, yeah, they'll stop the lock in. But if you ever need to work on your brakes, now you got to rip off your effing studs. Also, what you want to make sure when you buy studs, if, if it's right here, if you can see right in there, yeah, yeah, there's an Allen. So now what that does is allow you to install and properly torque these. They have a couple of them that are race styles, that have a bullet that is meant to change wheels quicker. But for most people, you're not changing wheels in the pits that quick. You need something that you can actually torque down and you know is safe. That other one, you need a special tool or you need a double nut setup. And make sure you lose, use proper Loctite. Blue Loctite, you get it off Amazon, it's not that expensive, and make sure you do it safe. So what we're going to be doing today, I'm going to be installing. I already did it on the rear. We're going to go do it at the front. And then we're going to be testing some new rims. Okay, well not new, but used rims that I have to see what I like on this car. Because... Maybe I want to keep the Sparkos, maybe I want to go with something, but I got three options, and hopefully you guys will throw in the comments and tell me what you like, but let's get to putting studs on the whole car. Okay, now when you're doing studs, first thing, take the wheels off, very simple. Get your tool, hopefully a gun and not just a hand wrench, and go. And you're off. So the other disadvantage of any European car, when you go to put a wheel on and you try to hang it, it is effing a hassle to do, watch. Get it on there, move things around, wiggle stuff. It's quite effing annoying. So, with studs, we're going to eliminate that. So now that I have the wheel off, you want to verify all your threads are good. You should kind of know that. If any of the bolts at any time of you go back and forth were bad or like getting caught up, make sure you tap these out. Once that's all done, I get a can of brake clean to try to clean anything out of there. You don't need that much, that's good. Now if you have shop air, you can use shop air to blow anything else out of there, or just have like a nice little can like this. I have shop air, but most of you guys don't. That's just a can of air. People use it to clean keyboards or to, you know, 
free stuff or do something inappropriate. But we're just going to do that. Very simple, very easy. Next, you're going to grab your studs. So these wheels take five studs. Examine your studs. Make sure nothing are broken or anything crazy. If the threads aren't good, don't put them in. That seems pretty straightforward to know that. Then you're going to get some of your blue Loctite. This is 243 and just put a little bit on the threads. Boop, 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 boop. Very simple. And then you hand thread these in, okay? If you're having any issues, stop. They should go in pretty much until they hit that stopper. Don't use an impact gun, don't use anything like that. Get them kind of in there. Da -da -da. Then, this is a little trick. With the rear brakes, you could actually hit the e-stop or the, uh, the parking brake, and they won't move. But the fronts, they move. So either you could have your friend hop in the car, but mine is out doing more stuff with parades, or I have a little trick that should not damage anything. I'll show you. I'm just going to put a screwdriver in the bottom right here. These are slotted, or not, yeah, they're, they're vented rotors. So it'll just hold it, it's just stopping it from getting there. Next, you're gonna grab your torque wrench. These are 25 foot pounds. So how do I like to do it is, you don't need to go into star pattern really for this, but you should anyways. So just do 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. Let it sit for about an hour. You can put your wheels on, and then I, after one to two days of driving, like to come back, pull the wheels off, and double check my torque. But we're gonna torque these right now. 25 foot pounds, remember that. Perfect. So now you're going to do it to all of them. And that's why you don't want to use a torque wrench. You don't want to get your bit stuck. So I'm going to knock it out to all of them. And you can kind of tell which ones you already torqued at because this one goes in a lot more because a lot tighter. So we're going to knock that out really quick. Now that you got them all tightened up and all that stuff, just make sure you're not hitting anything. We're just spinning the rotor. Spin freely. No unnormal, nothing. So now I'm going to be showing there's three sets of rims that I want to try to test on this car. Now, Two of the sets, I already have them all purchased. I would just have to get new tires and stuff like that. The other set, I would still have to get fronts. So we had the Sparkos on here that you saw before. I'm gonna put them up here just so you can see them again. Oh, these are not light. Let me actually stand straight. Sparkos, pretty cool. The only disadvantage is these you can't really get anymore. So if I ever damage, which one of them is damaged, I think has a chip, it's kind of hard to fix so I can't get them. Next, and they're not that light. Next is RPF1s. They slide right up and on, super effing light, and they're everywhere to buy. You can find them used, you can find them, just order them. So these, which are light, have good tires, RPF ones. Now I'm going to show you the third one, but we have to go to the rear because I only have I only have rears for that. Okay, so now we're on the rear. So now our third set. This is these aren't as light as RPF ones, but they're a completely different size. So my RPF ones, I would have done 17 all around. My Sparko, I would have done 16 in the rear, 17 up front. These are 15 inch rears. <sighs> Bam, a set of 15 inch Jeg Star wheels. These are not super light, but they're super effing cheap and easy to get. So I could try these bad girls out, but I will have to get two more for the front. I'll probably end up doing like a 17 by five or a 17 by eight. And it just is what it is. So these are 15 by eight. I could also go 15 by 10 if I ever want to, but this allows me to get a 15 inch rim on this bad girl. Now you might say, why would I want a 15 inch rim over my 17? So the 15 inch makes drag radials a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get. You can get 275, what, 275 50s all day long, almost anywhere. Literally, I could go to discount tires and get them on the shelf. 17 inch drag radials, a little bit harder to find if you want to get a bigger size, if you want to go like 295 or 285, and they cost a little bit more money. Now, also with the 15 inch wheel, I have a lot more sidewall. So if I want to drop pressure, I could get a lot more bigger of footprint. That's good and bad. Now, if I want to start going around corners and going, I kind of want a 17 inch rim, but 
I think these bad girls look pretty good. Next, what we gotta do with the, with the conversion kit is get some nuts. That's what we got right here. Now, I ordered some nuts, they're chrome. I kinda like that whole chrome and black look. That's not the problem with these nuts. The problem is I didn't read it properly, and these are a 19 inch socket. That's okay, but I kinda like having the 17 inch just so all my Mercedes would have 17. I just go for every room. This I said to get a 19 inch socket, which I have plenty of those. That's the only disadvantage, but we're gonna see which ones we like better. So everyone in the comments, tell me, get the Jags all around with a 15, 17 up front, go RPF ones with 17 all around, or the Sparkos, just cause the Sparkos are classic and they're kind of a lot more rare, 16 rear, 17 front. So let me know in the comments, but we're gonna pick, I'm gonna pick which one and then we're gonna take it out of the road after this hurricane is over. Because if you didn't know, I'm kind of in a hurricane. Supposedly, I got trash everywhere though, so I don't really care. It says it's Debbie the hurricane, but we got nothing except flooding on the property next door because they decided to do construction over there. So I'm going to throw these bad girls on, let it sit. I'm probably going to let it sit for the whole night because I can't take this bad girl out tonight. I'll show you what rims I decided to go with for now, but I can always change it because I have all these rims here. So catch in a little bit. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we have some of our tires that are just dry rotted and just like way past gone for our like drag tires. But then we got these um, Nittos, what is it, uh, NT55R2s that aren't dry rotted, ain't bad, but they're just over a year old and they were just been sitting. So what I got to kind of bring them back to life, which I'm hoping, is some, um, what do you call this? Race tire cleaner and prep. So this stuff is supposed to, you spray it on a drag tire, so it's supposed to soften it up and pull any oils out of it. So what we're gonna do is basically spray this vigorously, give it a good scrub-a-dub-dub, -dub. and when I've done this before, you can see I sprayed on one of my other tires, I'll show you, it literally is pulling oil and everything out of it. So we're just gonna give this a couple sprays and I'll show you what it actually looks like on the tire that we let sit already for a few minutes. All right, now we're gonna let this sit. Let me actually show you what's dripping off the other one. So this has just been a couple minutes and you'd already see like that is just oil is pulling off or whatever debris. And then over here, you can still see just like it's just pulling it off. So we're going to let we're going to soak them a little bit more. Let them sit for three to five minutes. Give them a good scrub and then kind of pressure wash. That's kind of how the directions say. And that should bring these drag radials back to life. So it's been sitting for like three to four minutes, like the directions say. So now I'm just going to like kind of pressure wash it all off, blow it all away. And that got a lot of like whatever was in there is black. So I'm hoping that's like oil or whatever and got it off that tire now. Okay, so here is what the RPF1 look like on the car. Not bad, pretty good. But I just don't know if they're as aggressive as I want them to look. But they do look good. I'll give you a whole walk around. So they don't look bad. The 17s definitely up front do look pretty good because they're nice and thin. They don't really rub or hit anything. And it'll be good if everyone to upgrade the calibers. And they they tuck in with a 255. It's nothing really crazy, nothing really bad. Now the studs are a little long, but I don't really mind that look. And it allows me to, if I ever want to do, don't worry about that tail light. I just, I hit something, <laughs> but it is all looking pretty, pretty good. So we're gonna go throw another set on and see which one I like better. All right, so we got the Sparco rims on. They look pretty good. Not super sure if I like them better or worse. They are definitely way heavier, but I'll give you a quick walk around. So I don't know if you even could tell with this sun, but they look okay. They don't look bad. They just don't pop out as much. Like, they just don't look cool. Granted, I don't know if that whole like 16 inch setup looks or even if it's just the sun, but I don't know. All right, so this is the final wheel setup. Now I don't really have the fronts, but we can look at the rears, and this is how like the 15 inch setup's gonna look at with a 17 up front. So I think it's gonna look pretty cool, but I am gonna take a picture and kind of Photoshop it, and then I'm gonna give you a nice little walk around. So they look pretty good with a 275 inch tire, it doesn't really poke too much. And I think it does look nice with like the black and silver accents. Now just imagine if it had like one up front, but that's looking pretty, pretty good. So I'm gonna put the pictures up of all the cars right over here and let you guys kind of pick to tell me what would look better. And yes, we are kind of photoshopping the one with the Jegs wheels just because I don't have the fronts, but I think it'll look pretty cool. So I'll throw them up right over here. So in the comments, tell me what you like. Now I will probably be going with different tires. 
I'm gonna be trying with, if I stay with a 17 inch rear, I'm gonna try to go as big as I could fit on that nine inch rear tire, or nine inch rear rim, but if I stay with the 15 inches, I'm probably gonna stick with a 275, maybe a 295. I don't really know yet. And then of course for up front, it's gonna be whatever is the latest and smallest I can fit under there. So if I do 17s, it'll be like a 205. And I'm pretty sure every aspect I like about it, I want a 17 inch rim up front, mainly because eventually I want to put four piston Brembos up front so this bad girl can stop pretty good. So I have to have a 17 for that. Maybe if I get a crazy effing good deal, I'll put 15s up front, but I doubt it. I'll probably just keep the 17s. So let me know what you guys like. RPF ones in black, Sparkos in that gray, or the Jeg stars in that black and silver contents. So throw me in the comments now, let me know. And if you guys got any co comments about the stud conversion, let me know. Also, I will say this, if you have the money, spend the money on an FCP Euro setup. If you don't, then yeah, go with the Amazon setup. It's cheap, quick, and easy to get. It's literally a third of the price. So throw a comment down, tell me if you guys like this videos, and I'll catch you guys later.